you, Father Prasant, and I very much appreciate the invitation to share some points for recollection for the month of December. Also, thank you for this uh, invitation and also for the introduction. I also immensely appreciate the great work uh, that you do. Now, what is important, you know, for me when I was thinking of, you know, what to talk, now throughout the pontificate of Pope Francis, you know, he has very much dedicated himself the uniting people and dismantling barriers that divide them. So his diligent efforts extend bridging gaps between diverse cultures, nations, and even leaders with differing beliefs. So his message encourages to break down walls that separate us and in their place construct bridges that connect us. So let's carry this sentiment as we reflect uh, you know, on our thoughts today. So uh, there is a slideshow for you. You know, it will be quite easy for you to follow. So everything is there. So let me now uh, do the screen sharing. Yeah. So the presentation outline will be, you know, we will have just an introductory story uh, and then a text, uh, just an overview of the text, bit of an exegesis, the message. And we will also just focus on the South Asian reality and a conclusion, some questions for reflection, and the prayer for generosity. Now, for introduction, I just took a tale from in the famous story, a tale told by Oscar Wilde, a giant was very much distressed by the fact that a group of children, they have taken to playing in his garden. But the giant, you know, uh, he did not appreciate their presence. You know, he didn't like these children. So unfortunately, he builds a high wall around his garden and put up a sign that read, trespasses will be prosecuted. Now, this isolation leads to garden being stuck, as we so to say in perpetual winter, devoid of joy. All that the wall accomplished was to keep out every source of joy and assure the giant of his solitary sadness. Now, this story or tale highlights the consequences of selfishness and the isolation it brings. So this introductory so story, I feel, that would serve as a backdrop against which to consider today's sacred text for recollection and the entire theme, crossing borders and building bridges. Now, the text is this. Now, this text, you know, I have taken specially the Matthew's version, but you also find the same story in Mark's version. Mark calls his women as the woman as the Syrophoenician woman, whereas Matthew would call her as a Canaanite woman. So I just read the text before we study the text. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And the daughter was healed at that moment. Now, just the overview of the text. If you see this text, the story of this Canaanite woman is one of the crucial texts in the Bible that very much reflects the motive of border crossing, especially against the backdrop of Jewish Gentile relations in regard to salvation history. Now, if you also carefully study the story, it is very much situated in every way in the borderland on the boundary between a Jew and a Gentile, between a friend and an enemy, between sacred and profane. So it is a story of pain and power, 
piety and prayer ultimately are blessings. So it is not just a nice little story about Jesus granting the request of a Gentile woman or just doing a healing. But if you look at the very deepest level, it's a complex and fearful story about Jesus' sense of identity and mission being transformed into a message of hope and salvation for all the world. Now, St. Ephraim himself will praise this woman for courageously breaking boundaries for the sake of the gospel. Now, let us you know, carefully once more do a bit of an exegesis. I, have, I will do it in two parts. First, we'll see prior to this text, you know, what happens. Now, here we find, you know, before this text, you know, Jesus and his followers, they are very much under verbal attack by the Pharisees and the scribes for not keeping the Jewish tradition regarding rituals before eating. Now, remember, this is the way that the boundaries were set and walls were created between the Jew and Gentiles, sacred and profane, friend and enemy. Now, Jesus, he counterattacks and he goes on to criticize their obsessing over external rituals and rules while ignoring the centrality of you know, one's heart to spiritual life, that is to love beyond boundaries. Now, fresh from this inner sort of a confrontation with the religious authorities of the day, Jesus and his disciples, they travel far northwest border of Israel to the region of the cities of Tyre and Sidon. Now, remember, this is a Gentile ter territory, which means that the Jew like Jesus was approaching an enemy territory. So Jesus is breaking the boundaries that are established. And out there in the borderland between this Jew and Gentile, between friend and enemy, sacred and profane, in the messy and conflicted world of first century Palestine, Jesus is suddenly approached by a local woman. Now, we are told that she was a Canaanite. Canaanite were old and bitter enemies of Israel. And Jesus and this woman are separated by religious boundaries, national boundaries, and gender boundaries. So when the Canaanite mother approaches him, Jesus also recognized as a foreigner and very much a hated a foreigner, and that is a Canaanite. Now Jesus recognizes what is in her heart, even though ethnic identity and religion are abhorrent to the Jews. Now the Jews would have loved to put up a border wall to keep, the, to keep the Canaanite out of their territory. Now, let us turn to the conversation that happens between the woman and Jesus. See the dynamics. Let's study the dynamics of this conversation. First, shouting. The first thing that is happening is that the woman starts shouting. In this shouting, we see the distance between Jesus and the woman symbolized. She feels it is be best not to get too close so she can shout at him from safe distance, trying to communicate across the boundaries that keeps them separate. Second, silence. Astonishingly, we are told that Jesus did not answer and his silence is deafening. The Canaanite woman has come smack up against the awesome and fearful silence of God. So out in the borderlands of our faith, we are also often you know, met with the fearful silence of God. The third dynamic, she keeps on persisting. She keeps on shouting after them. She keeps crying out for mercy in spite of the silence of God. We too, when we find ourselves at the end of our rope, at the edges of our faith, we find ourselves still crying for mercy in spite of the silence of God. And then fourth, refusal. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is a flat refusal. Jesus and his words are refusal of the woman's request for mercy. Notice also that it is a restatement of the boundary that exists between Jew and Gentile. But she keeps on you know, pleading. 
despite Jesus' reminder of that boundary that exists between them, she persists. She will come close, I would say scandalously close. She will cross the physical space that separates them and kneels down before him and pleads one more for a stricken daughter. And amazingly, Jesus slurs in her again. Jesus rebuffs her, this time with a slur. He says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. So it is an ethnic slur that reinforces the boundary between Jew and a Gentile. Insults. But she will not retreat to her own territory. She will not keep the barriers keep away. A need is too great and a faith is too strong. So this time taking the insult hurled away, she turns that back to Jesus. And he, she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. It is at this point Jesus' identity and mission is revealed. So out in the borderland, this woman takes Jesus' insult and transform it into a profound statement about the universal mission of Christ. And here, Jesus' identity and mission was transformed by his encounter with the Canaanite woman. Now, the message of this text is very important. The text is driving an issue that is central to the Bible. It is the issue of relationship between Israel and the other nations. In the centuries since they were called into being God's people, the Israelites known themselves to be God's special elect, God chosen one, referred to Deuteronomy chapter 7, 6, 9. The point is, Israel is chosen for the sake of nations, God's salvific principle for all nations. This salvific purpose has to do with the whole universe and the whole of humanity. God's desire for Israel was that they would go and teach other nations about him. Israel was to be a nation of priests, prophets and missionaries to the world. God's intent was for Israel to be a distinct people, a nation that pointed others towards God and his promised provision of Redeemer, Messiah and Saviour. For the most part, Israel failed in this task. There was a tendency to erect both virtual and real borders around themselves as if to separate God's chosen from the rest of humankind. So these walls, boundaries protected the clean from the unclean, the seemingly good from those thought to be evil, and the saved from those outside the pale of God's salvation. So the significance of the Canaanite woman is that she challenges these boundaries and the mission of Jesus. A woman, supposed sinner, a non-Jew, she probably felt herself to be a prisoner, walled in by several layers of prejudice, resentment and suspicion, brought home this truth to power that is to Jesus, that God's salvific plan is for all. Finally, through the restoration that Jesus grants, both the nameless Canaanite woman and her daughter are free to experience life new, socially, culturally and relationally. So the holistic nature of the restoration that Jesus provides not only liberates this woman's daughter from demons, but also offers them both access as well as other Gentiles to everlasting life with God. Moreover, as this passage concludes, ethnicity no longer serves as a barrier to entering the kingdom of God. The point is, the message is, a faith brings bridge and his Jesus' mercy bridges. So in this context, let us look at you know what is important for us today. So we all feel that this time is a time for change. Today, walls and borderlands continues to segregate God's people. Walls are 
not just merely political wars, there are also economics as in treaties and agreements that marginalizes and disenfranchises people. So wars can also be social and emotional, as in the wars we raise against others who are different or unwanted, or who are deemed unforgivable or unlovable. Some wars are even self-imposed as a means of protecting ourselves from others or as a way to avoid being involved in the frequent messiness of life. Now, let us look at the South Asian reality, some key elements, some key important concerns today that we have. Now, South Asia is known for its pluralistic ethos, but today, tolerant and nonviolent multicultural and religious ethos is undergoing severe interruption. So it's a huge challenge for South Asia. Second, democracy. We are contemplating the death of democracy, not just, you know, in particular country. If you take South Asia as a whole, you know, this is a huge challenge for us. And then the indigenous people, they are being dispossessed of their land and identity. Then citizens also can't, cannot breathe democracy. So there is so much of inequality. So here the point is the church in South Asia it cannot no longer be complacent with offering mere palliative care to the people through its many pious practices, devotions, and charitable and development ministries. The ever ancient, ever new vision, mission of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke spells out the values of new society of freedom, fellowship, and justice that he came to establish. So now what could we do? So it is here probably we could go back to the text again, to the story of Canaanite woman, and gain some lessons for us, you know, that can be very helpful. Number one, first, the woman crossed the gender and sexuality boundary. The woman teaches about the universality of God's grace, that God's unconditional love is available to all, no exceptions. Second, she crossed the landscape and spatiality. The Canaanite woman presented Jesus as a regional savior in, contra in contrast to the Judean Messiah. So that concept was, you know, very much at that time was quite visible. Third, she crossed the purity boundary. Canaanite woman crossed the ethnicity boundary. She convinces Jesus to minister outside Jewish parameter prior to the establishment of the Gentile mission at his resurrection. So the invitation is to go beyond our comfort zone. Fourth, she also crossed the purity boundary. So this woman decided to become a member of the community. The invitation is to immerse ourselves into the reality of others. Fifth, she crossed the social status boundary. The woman's provides a major means by which social hierarchies can finally be, finally be broken down. Sixth, she also crossed the religious boundary. Through her words and actions, she was both cross-cultural and counter-political, daring to go beyond religious, socio-political and ethnic borders in order to seek help for her daughter. So this is what, you know, probably I, I, I would feel like sharing this. Border crossing is fundamental to human movement, especially the movements of God's people through economics, war, love, and the building of our soul. Migration is fundamental to the divine in incarnation. So this is what we reflect now probably starting from tomorrow during the Advent as well as Christmas. So God's incarnational commitment is to cross the existential border between the divine and human. God literally becomes human to accompany us in our humanity and in that act shows how to cross borders 
to accompany our human neighbors on their journey. So we follow a God who migrates. God leads people out of slavery, cross deserts. Jesus also leads people from rural life of Galilee to the big city for profound prophetic and salvific work. God calls, sends, accompanies prophets, judges, apostles and disciples to meet and engage other cultures and people. God moves people like Paul, Ruth, Rahab uh, across borders to build communities of care and compassion. St. Paul even calls this network communities of care the body of Christ. So the dire need of the time is the humanization of our society. So human beings cannot survive as isolated islands against the atoms at creating cultural and religious isolation in our countries, dialogue will make the elements that are seemingly a barrier or a wall, a bridge of relationship. Identity and dialogue are not enemies. Our own cultural and religious identities are strengthened and enriched as a result of dialogue with those unlike ourselves. So. God is universal love. So as long as we are part of that love and we share it, we are called to that in a universal uh, fraternity. So uh, uh, there are no others, no them. There is only us. So we want with God and in God an open world, a world without walls, a world without borders, without people rejected or without strangers. So to achieve this world, we must have that open heart. You know, if you just read chapter four, Fratelli Tutti, you know, it's very much, you know, gives a very beautiful, you know, um, a spirituality. So we need to experience social friendship, seek what is morally good and practice a social ethic because we know we are part of that universal fraternity. So we are called to solidarity, encounter and dialogue. So this is what, you know, the story of this, you know, women, the woman and Jesus in the Canaanite woman teaches us. So what is clear, I feel that for this Christmas, at least in a little, little way, let us try, strive to build bridges, bridges of mercy, bridges of compassion and bridges of love. So just some questions for, uh, for a reflection. Now, probably you also could, you know, think or we could broadly think, you know, what are the borderlands of our life and faith? Are we a bridge or a barrier to Jesus? So where have you come up against the painful realities of boundaries separating you from others, from God, even from your own self? And have you felt the pain of misunderstanding and the sting of insult that often accompanies our best efforts to get to know our neighbors. So, what are we building? What barriers or block people? You know, uh, block uh, people from God today. So, uh, shouldn't the church encourage a kind of environment where there is dialogue between women and men? where there is an exchange of, you know, give and take of learning and changing minds. Probably, probably, synodal way is another way. So as we, just to sum up, you know, today, crossing borders, you know, building bridges is crucial as the whole humanity, I feel, not just the South Asian reality in a breaking point where people are, you know, um, focused on building bridges based on you know, fanaticism, ultra-nationalism, different ideologies and perceptions. So what ultimately can keep us you know, more alive and more you know, merciful is that to understand that love is clarity of perception that calls for accuracy of response, which is, in a sense, you know, building and bringing people together and forming or or raising a new humanity. So thank you very much. Thank you, Prasad.